Nintendo 64 may have had some really great wrestling games, but when it comes to the traditional one-on-one -on -one fighting game, your pickings were slim at best. And we looked at a couple, and outside of Mortal Kombat, eh. Today, however, we'll be looking at a fighting game that not only got a sequel, but was touted by critics to be one of the best fighting games on the N64. And that game is Fighter's Destiny, released in 1998 courtesy of Ocean, Imagineer, Genki, and Opus. That is quite a mouthful. The game gives you nine playable characters from the start, with five more unlocked through various means and conditions. Not exactly the most awe-inspiring cast of characters, and some of them might seem like lesser knockoffs of more famous fighting game personalities as it were, but you do fight a cow, so that's something. Aside from that, you have a number of modes to dabble in. Versus computer, the traditional arcade mode, versus player, the traditional versus mode, and a practice mode where you could practice your moves. These are st fairly standard features for the time. There's also a master challenge mode, which you'll spin a roulette gimmick to determine whether you'll fight the master, not that one, and possibly learn a new skill for your fighter once you beat him, or you'll fight the joker, not that one either, and try not to lose, because if you do, any new skills learned in this mode are quickly taken away. So there's a bit of a risk versus reward, with a dash of chance at play with this mode, but it's a unique way of building up your fighter and getting new moves in the process. Finally, there's a record-breaking mode where you either beat foes in under a minute, survive a shaking rodeo cube against a cow, or the usual survival mode gimmick. It's something different, I suppose. So in most fighting games, to win a match, you'll need to knock out your opponent and win a number of rounds. Usually two out of three rounds is the default. Fighter's Destiny, on the other hand, does something somewhat unique in that it utilizes a point system in which whoever scores the maximum amount of required points wins. Not only that, but different means of taking out your opponent yields different point values. A knockout blow will net you four points, while a ring out will be worth one single point. There are other methods of victory, throwing down your opponent, slamming him to the ground is one example, hitting your opponent with a fatal blow is another, and when your stamina meter is drained, you're not immediately KO'd, but you're left defenseless for a short period of time, and thus open to your opponent's killing blow. Unless you manage to keep your distance for a period at which point you'll fully recover, health and all. And health does gradually recover bit by bit as rounds progress. This takes a little getting used to, especially the points system, which is listed as rounds in the options, and will make first-timers assume you win rounds rather than points, so you set it to two rounds, only to lose to a throwdown that's worth three points, one point more than needed to win. Fortunately, you can configure the number of points each victory earns you, as well as the number of points required to win, but only in relation to the versus modes, the master challenge and the record-breaking modes have their own fixed point values and cannot be changed. With all that having been said, I actually do like the idea of a point system implemented in that different forms of victory doesn't carry the same weight on the default setup. Pushing someone out of the ring doesn't reward you with as many points as a knockdown or a critical blow that will take you out instantly. And the fighting itself isn't too bad, obviously modeled after games like Tekken or Virtual Fighter, with lots of moves and combos pulled off via specific button sequences, although there are some Street Fighter-esque quarter circles thrown in for the really big moves. And because throwdowns are a way to victory, there's a mini grapple mechanic in trying to evade or counter throw attempts that gives it a bit of a wrestling mentality that I kind of dig. Controls make use of the D-pad and the A and B buttons, which feel incredibly simplistic and run the risk of feeling like a mindless button masher at times, but at the very least they are functional, responsive, little to no lag, and there's a handy dandy command list that you could bring up to learn some of your fighters' combos and moves, which is somewhat commonplace nowadays, but not so much back in the day, and so I appreciate this convenient tool. Oh, there's also a guard button for blocks and other buttons on... The C buttons could be mapped to do other things, but not much more other things. Fighter's Destiny is lacking in the graphical department. From a technical standpoint, it's somewhat average fare. Somewhat blurry backgrounds, basic mildly textured cube space for your fighters to compete on, and some rough looking character models with some stiff moving animation. The frame rate feels a bit rough at times. I don't want to say it's choppy because it doesn't feel it but it's not quite as smooth as it could have been. The character designs in general are uninspired, some generically stereotypical archetypes, others generically generic copies of other fighters from other familiar games, and then you have a cow, man, so Bart Simpson won't be touching this one anytime soon. 
that might go over the heads of some people. That's okay. Nobody's going to get that. On the flip side though, the game does have a superb soundtrack. Game starts up, opening demo. Hot dang, this is some sweet ass synth. Graphically, the game could clip to the high heavens for all I care, but at the very least you got some jammin' tunes to serenade your fighter's destiny along the way. Sound effects and a few hints of voice bites scattered throughout. Eh, that's fine. It sounds like what it's supposed to. Not much to say there. Overall, Fighter's Destiny is one of the N64's better fighters, which doesn't seem like much when the competition is not that high both in terms of quantity or quality. It's essentially a big fish in a small pond situation once you set aside the giant whale that's known as Smash. Despite that, Fighter's Destiny is actually a pretty decent fighting game that has a couple unique things going for it to make up for its largely derivative nature. Might not be a top tier fighter in the grand scheme of things, but as far as second rate bandwagon jumpers go, Fighter's Destiny is better than most. All in all, a perfectly fine little fighter on the Nintendo 64.